Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Sam, that's the Sun Eater, and this is a YouTube channel where we look at how to use solar and batteries to add on range to an old EV. Today's topic is going to be aero wheels and how we can use aero wheels to add a little bit of range and longevity onto our EV. But before we dive into that, I'm going to give you guys a quick update of the system. In the last episode, I replaced the lead acid batteries I'd been using with a bank of lithium batteries which shaved off about uh, 100 pounds of weight and added uh, in between 1 and 2 kilowatts of power into our battery bank. It's worked out great. It's allowed me to drive the vehicle on much cloudier, colder days than I was able to beforehand. And the solar's actually been doing pretty good lately. February is normally, you know, we're in early February now. It's normally a terrible month for solar. And I want to take you guys back to two days ago, which was February the 5th, and show you how much we were able to get out of the solar on our car. There we go. That's our, so that was uh, last Thursday. Even though it was, it, it, we're in February, which like I said, it's a bad month for solar, we got almost two kilowatt hours in total power that day. That's really uh, good news. That 1.8 kilowatt hour reading is really good news in February because we can normally expect our solar input to be just about double in July and August what it is in February, which would bring this system up to about four kilowatt hours a day, somewhere around there, which would give us um, anywhere in between 16 and 20 miles of range just off the solar, not even counting the batteries that we've got in the back as well. And if we take uh, four kilowatts out of those batteries and four kilowatts out of the solar, that's uh, eight, which, <laughs> which should put us somewhere around 35 to 40 miles of range in July, which would be fantastic. Additionally, I've put about 2,800 miles on the vehicle since I bought it, which translates into about $500 in gas savings so far. Okay, so that's it for the update. Now let's get into the main topic of today's episode, aero wheels. What are they? How do they work? And who made the aero wheels that we're using today? Well, people have studied extensively the aerodynamic profile of the vehicle and tried to figure out where all the, the drag force on the vehicle comes from. I found a pretty cool paper by the Society of Automotive Engineers that I'll link in the video description below. And they're one of many people who have done exhausting research to find out exactly what parts of the vehicle contribute to that drag. And one pretty shocking number that a lot of people have found is that the, the wheels and the tires contribute as much as 25% of the overall drag of the vehicle. So once people found this out, of course the next thing they tried to do was find out how they can flatten that surface to eliminate some of that aerodynamical drag. And how instead of having this really kind of rough surface with a lot of hard corners that the wind can catch on and pull on, how we can put like a plate or a cover over there and just present one smooth surface and, and get rid of some of that 25% of that aerodynamical drag. Well, there's a guy over in New Zealand by the name of Paul Kennett who has a YouTube channel as well. Paul is also a Nissan LEAF owner. Uh, he is very talented at working with those 18650 little lithium battery cells. They look kind of like AAAs. Um, Tesla made all their batteries out of them for the first uh, six or so years that they were making vehicles. They switched over to the 2170 cell recently. But uh, Paul Kennett has done some cool work with those 18650 cells making power walls and other stuff out of them. And he is also very talented when it comes to 3D printing things and uh, designing, I guess, the AutoCAD kind of specs that you put into the printer that print these out. I don't know anything about 3D printing, which might be part of why I find this so cool, but he made these. This right here may not look like an aero wheel. 
it certainly doesn't look like something that would provide a smooth flush surface for the cover of this tire like we need but Paul went in and I'm sure he had to tweak this 10 or 15 times and printed out this little piece of plastic that snaps right into cover on these wheels and gives a pretty flat profile to that tire right there. So you get a set of like 20 of these things. Here's one with the, um, the valve stem cut out. You put them over the holes in your tire and after he printed these things out, of course he did some exhausting tests. I'm not even going to do an efficiency test with these today because he already did it so exhaustingly that I would be struggling just to replicate results that he's already done and documented fairly well. Um, I'm going to put some of those results up on the screen right now and you can see that once he had these plates established and installed on his car, he was able to get a 3 to 5% increase in range, a, a 3 to 5% increase in efficiency and reduction in aerodynamical drag once he had these little printouts installed on all the holes on his leaf. Okay, this is Paul's minifactory.com website where he's got all his different kind of specs and pieces that he's made plans for on his 3D printer. If we go over to right here, these are his aero wheels. And we can scroll down and he's got all his data posted right here. Now this is what really blew me away about these, is he ran 19 different runs with these wheels on his car. On the northbound and southbound side, you can see the, here's for the southbound side, and there's a little, looks like about a 3% gap right here and the time that his vehicle was able to coast without uh, before it reached a certain minimum preset speed and he's got the same set of data over here for the northbound side nine runs um, north and south uh, everything is posted the elevation rise in both direction the time of day even the wind speed it's extraordinarily detailed data and I was really surprised that the guy went out of his way to to be so meticulous about logging all this and right here we get to the kind of the most important little chart of the the page where he's got his times coasting until he coasts down to a certain speed without the arrow wheels versus posting with and you can see it lasts about it takes him about 13 seconds longer to reach that certain speed so he crunches some numbers, does a little bit of math, and is able to come up with a percent increase in efficiency. And even makes a bar graph out of it at different speeds. So this is where he gets his uh, 3 to 6% increase in efficiency figure. And that lines up pretty nicely with um, studies that other people have done very similar to this. I'll see if I can post a link right here to somebody that did a very similar study and documented it very meticulously using Tesla aero wheels. And you can see he, he arrives at a similar set of data. So this 3 to 6% increase seems to be kind of typical across the board for these aero wheels. Okay, so 3 to 5% increase, that doesn't sound like a whole lot. What does that do for us? Well, let's assume the worst case scenario, which would be like three, a 3% increase in efficiency. On a 50 mile round trip commute like I have, 3% of 50 miles is only going to be about a mile and a half, which isn't a whole lot of range. <laughs> but this is a YouTube channel where we look at how to take old degraded leaves and through any all the means we can, solar, batteries, extend that range out as far as we can and add utility to those vehicles. So, for the people who watch this channel, um, a worst case scenario of a mile and a half might be something worth it for them. Um, the faster you drive, the more efficient, the more gains you're going to see out of these aero wheels because the more air drag is on the vehicle when you go faster. If you're tooling around the city at, you know, 25 miles an hour, 
you probably won't see any increase in efficiency at all from them. But when you get on the freeway and you're driving 60, you're going to see that increase in efficiency hit those uppermost numbers of about 5 or 6%. So, that's great if we're driving an older leaf. What if you bought a one of these 2017, 2018, 2019 models that's got the 30, 40, or 60 kilowatt hour batteries in them? You know, Nissan started making their vehicles with a lot bigger battery. Uh, what, what good could, uh, you know, three, six, even seven miles of added range possibly do you if you've got a new leaf? Well, if you have a new leaf, the lifespan of the vehicle is going to be the lifespan of the battery. Even the new leafs don't have a temperature control, an active temperature control mechanism for their batteries. So anytime you're driving with them and it's hot outside, uh, you're discharging that battery in hot conditions and damaging and degrading the battery. Batteries don't like to be charged or discharged at temperatures above about 85 degrees. And you're discharging the battery while you're driving it. The rate that you're discharging your battery when you're driving it is dependent on how much power you're pulling out of that. And if you're like if you're driving faster, that's going to pull more power out. If you've got the AC blasting, that's going to pull more out. And the drag of the vehicle is going to pull more power out of that battery to keep you going because your your motor has to fight that drag to push against it, and the power for the motor to fight that drag comes from your battery. What's the best way to put this? Because you've made the vehicle more aerodynamical, you're reducing the power requirement to push that vehicle through the air. And because you're reducing that power requirement, you're reducing the rate that your battery is cycling. So really, even at small increases in efficiency, one, two, three percent, turn into a one, two, three percent of that vehicle's lifespan, uh, increase of the the battery's lifespan, which in a Nissan LEAF is the vehicle's lifespan, your battery is going to be the first thing to fail. So if you want to keep, if you've just bought a late model LEAF, 2017 to 2020, and you want to keep that thing going for as long as possible, you want to try and be the first guy to get 200,000 miles out of a LEAF on the original battery, then an increase of 5% efficiency could actually be a big deal to you. That could be an extra over 200,000 miles. That could be an extra 10,000 miles of range that you're getting on the same number of cycles of the battery. And that's why I feel like these little leaf inserts can be a good deal both for people like me with old degraded leaves that struggle to get, you know, even 60, 70 miles in a day. I'll take every extra mile I can get and they might even be a good deal for somebody who just brought a brand new leaf who wants to try and make that thing last as long as possible. So how much did I pay for these things? Well, Paul is in New Zealand and international shipping would cost a ton to get these over here. So he works with somebody in the States who has a 3D printer who will print out a set of 22 of these things and mail them out to you um, for $150. If that's something you're interested in, I'm going to see if I, Eric will let me tag his uh, business email. If you guys want to reach out and contact him, I'll put that in the comments section. Okay, so Eric got back to me, and he is okay with me putting his contact email in the video description. But he did say that a decent 3D printer is only about 250 bucks. It's a great hobby. You can learn a new skill. And he doesn't really make any money printing these arrow wheels at this price point. Similar to my YouTube page, Eric makes these things mainly just to help people who need a low-end EV. Uh, me, Paul in New Zealand, Eric, this whole YouTube community, our goal here is to try and make electric vehicles more accessible to people who don't have 40 grand to drop on a Tesla or a Chevy Bolt. Even 10 grand is a stretch for some people. It's kind of a labor of love for him. So if you do contact him and put it in order, please be kind to him and be patient while he gets them printed. Uh, they are time consuming to print, as you can see from the video here. And, uh, you know, he's got to make 22 of them, so it takes a little while. He also wanted me to mention that these arrow wheels can trap some of the heat from the brakes in the wheel well. So if you drive really aggressively and you ride the brakes hard, these are not for you. Also, the later model Leafs 2016 and forward have a new wheel design. 
So the arrow wheel inserts that I show in this video will not work for those. You'll need to use a different mold of arrow wheel. Um, I think Eric is working on that right now. Here's some pictures of what he's building. Additionally, I'm going to, I obviously haven't driven my vehicle with these things on it yet. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to pin a comment to the top of the comments section that also has a running timeline of how long I've driven with these things and whether I've liked them or had any problems with them. And I'll do like a, an update every month or so for the next several months on that. Okay, that's it for the arrow wheels. Thank you, Paul. You made a pretty cool little product. I am looking forward to trying these things out. Let's jump into our economy V of the week section. Okay, today's economy V is coming to you from El Paso, Texas. I called the guy to make sure that it is there and all the pictures are accurate. They're not stock photos offline anywhere. And everything is representative of the vehicle. It's a 2011. The interior is decent. The tires are good. And you know it got the battery changed out because it still has all of its battery bars in spite of being a 2011 model with almost 100,000 miles on it. So this is definitely one of those vehicles that somebody got Nissan to honor their battery warranty on and it was replaced. You can also see from that photo that it even at 60 miles in regular drive mode, it's still not at full charge. This is a vehicle that you can easily, easily get 60 miles of range out of, even on the freeway. And for just $3,900, this thing's begged to be made into a solar car. We can rebuild the setup that I have in the back of my Leaf right now in this car. And for right around seven grand, we can have an EV that will very reliably do 100 miles a day. That's a pretty good deal. You'd have to check out the, uh, the drivetrain on it since it does have 100,000 miles on it. But these electric motors are pretty reliable. I would not be surprised if that car is working perfectly. All right, that's it for the Economy Vs of the Week. So every year in Dallas at Fair Park, they have hold a giant conference called the Earth X Fair. It's a big event where lots of different vendors and people have created uh, green energy, renewable energy, new recycling ideas can all get together and kind of showcase their different ideas, things they're working on. Um, there's tons of so, uh, solar power residential providers there, wind energy, pretty much anything you can think about, hydrogen, any kind of renewable resources you can think about, they have them at the EarthX Fair. Uh, there was about 180,000 people there last year, so real big deal. They completely uh, fill up Fair Park with this convention, and I got a booth there coming up this year in April. So if you're in Dallas or near it and you're planning on going to the EarthX Fair, um, I will give you some more updates before the, the date of the convention, and you can swing on by and check this thing out in person and marvel at the wonder and goofiness of it and myself. Today, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to my Patreon sponsors for helping me experiment and look for new parts. I'm always trying to look for ways to make these portable EV charging stations uh, more efficient and find ways to do it cheaper. I want to make this as a, systems like this as accessible as I can to people on a tight budget. And every dollar, every penny that I get through Patreon goes directly toward the purchase of parts and experimentations for these systems. It's all completely transparent. You can see a running tally of how much is in the fund on Patreon for the research into this. And I'm even gonna post when I buy a part from that fund to experiment on this, and I've got a few in mind. I'll even post on the site exactly what it is so you can kind of see your donations go into work, into research, into the building of these systems, and I think that's pretty cool. I'll include a link to the Patreon site in the video description. That's all I got for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Bye.